my two sisters who are chairing tonight's meeting, Senator the Honorable Laurel Lizama and Senator the Honorable Renuka Sagram Singh. Let's hear they've been doing an excellent job. And of course, let me acknowledge our political leader, the Honorable Dr. Keith Rowley, who is listening our meeting. Um, we have the good fortune of having uh, my constituent, uh, our lady vice chairman and her husband, they have decided that they want the best MP, MP for Arima, so they live in the constituency of Arima, right, Fitz? <laughs> okay, thank you, Camille. <laughs> uh, let me again acknowledge our special advisor to our prime minister, Mrs. June Ewan Williams. Okay. Um, His Worship the Mayor, Cagney Casime, of course my sister at, who's here at the head table, who's the Honorable Lisa Morris Julian, Member of Parliament for Dabadi Omera and Minister in the Ministry of Education, and the Honorable Minister of Education, the Honorable Diane Nyan Gadsby Dolly, Member of Parliament for St. Anne's East. Of course, there are several uh, other. The, we have the chairman of the Sawan Labantil Regional Corporation, uh, who was also a, a former cabinet minister with me, Anthony Roberts. There are several officers here. The election officer, Ms. Indar Paris Ram. And for us in Arima, our coordinator, Mr. Anthony Garcia, could we give him a special <laughs> round of applause? Yes. So let me start by saying that, you know, I have been working with several of the candidates. And one of the things that some people are saying is that they're not, they're not sure if they're going to vote because, you know, local government, they don't vote. Some people tell you they don't vote for local government. Now, that must be a serious concern for us when you hear that comment. So you have to take a little time and try to figure out why it is some people don't vote for local government. And with the efforts that have been made by the Honorable Prime Minister, especially in the area of local government reform, I hope that people have been listening to exactly what it is the Prime Minister has said when he speaks to local government and why it is important for you to go out and vote on the 14th of August. And not just to vote, but to vote for the People's National Movement. Now, if you were paying attention to the debate as it relates to making Separia and Diego Martin to join Arima, Shogonas, and Point Fortin, who are already boroughs, you would have listened to what the opposition had to say. And they actually were making an argument for local government reform and for increased allocation, but at the same time, they didn't support it. Now, I know that almost every person who is present here tonight would have traveled at some time to the United States or some other country abroad. And the minute you land there, you comply. And what do you comply with? You comply with separating and put in the bottles and other things where they're supposed to go. And you, some come home and say, well, why it is we can't have things that way? Why it is, you know, their places are certain areas are so clean? And why is it that we can't do that in Trinidad and Tobago? Now, if you're talking local government reform, one of the important things has to be the issue of collecting taxes. You visit Canada, United States, and the only reason why they are getting the services in those areas is because people are paying their taxes. And it's the taxes that are utilized in order to ensure that you have the kind of garbage collection and the kind of services that you want. But 15 years without taxes 
and the United National Congress again saying that they're going to challenge the recent legislation where we dealt with the property taxes, those of us who have been following local government would realize that the majority of the allocation goes towards wages and salaries. And the local government reform that has been proposed and passed by the People's National Movement is to make those changes where the various corporations will now have the opportunity to collect those taxes and improve the services that you want. That's really what it is about. So on the one hand, they talk local government reform. When they were there, they didn't make the reforms that they are claiming the PNM should make, but at the same time, they objected. And I want to urge you who are here, particularly today, and those of you who are listening, either on radio, on television, this is a very serious matter. We cannot ask for improvements. We cannot ask for better garbage collection. We want our cemeteries clean regularly. You want the drains clean. It requires money. It requires that you pay your taxes so that they can collect those taxes and you can have your services improved. I want to share with you that I started off, as Laurel said, in local government. And at that time, I think the, I would say the stipend was about $795 at that time. The Honorable Prime Minister has proposed that the councillors will now become full-time. And those who are not full-time at this time, those who are going out, will understand that even though as it stands now, you are not full-time, but you are expected to be full-time. You're expected to deliver services basically 24-7. And those of you who are listening would know that even the services that they are not supposed to provide, you still ask them to do those services. You still expect that they are going to understand virtually about everything, whether it's the health sector, whether it's housing, it matters not. You want your counselors to be educated and knowledgeable about virtually every issue, not just local government, so that you as a Burgess, you want to feel comfortable to go to them so they can deliver those services. So one of the things is the issue of the counselors being full-time. So whether or not you're talking about garbage collection, paving of local roads, whether it's the market, whether it's disaster response, we know that local government touches every single one of us. And we also understand that the People's National Movement is well aware of the importance local, of local government as an agency of service delivery. Now, as Minister of Planning and Development, I can tell you that local government reform will have many positive impacts on the way the government serves you. Local government reform is part of Trinidad and Tobago's Vision 2030 National Development Strategy, where we have devoted time to institutional transformation. And I want to share with you a bit of the Vision 2030 document on that theme too that spoke about delivering good governance and service excellence. Some of you would remember that when we talked about local government reform, we started under now deceased Rene Dumas, Hazel Manning, Frankie Khan, uh, now Kazim Hussein, several ministers that were involved in the local government reform until we got to the stage where the Honorable Prime Minister felt this is a document and this is a process for which we can all be comfortable. So this is what the 2030 vision spoke to. So you would understand that this is not something that just came about overnight. This is something that has been in the making for some time. And it speaks to the enhancement of the local government machinery is premised on the basis that bringing services such as solid waste disposal, flood control, and public safety closer to the people contributes to a well-functioning community. 
It also says that the timely access to services and opportunities requires the devolution of certain central government responsibilities, such as physical planning to municipalities and the strengthening of local governance and involving more persons in decision making, especially at the grassroots level. Now, I'm sure a lot of the candidates who are walking will tell you that some people still ask you, how will local government improve our lives? Now, local government reform, as I indicated to you, did not just start yesterday. And your elected representatives will have more responsibilities, and the executive of the local government body will have a greater degree of autonomy, both in terms of planning and managing resources. So I want to say to you that the Tongue and Country, for example, planning division of the Ministry of Planning and Development, will certain aspects of it will be available to your local municipal body to deal with what is known as simple developments. Simple developments are defined as, for example, billboard applications, advertising signs, planning permission that does not require certificates of environmental clearance, change and use depending on specific sizes, land subdivision with specific ranges. So anything outside of those will be referred to as in, to the National Planning Authority as complex developments. So from a planning perspective, local government reform has several benefits. As I said, empowering municipalities to plan their development effectively. The other benefit is that it will empower municipal corporations to more effectively manage their own affairs for the, to better serve the citizens. Now, as we stand, as the position right now is that you have five borough corporations, as I indicated, two city corporations, and seven regional corporations. On the, it was the, on the June 9th is when the president assented to Separia and Diego Martin becoming regional corporations. So we had the good fortune today of seeing the seven councillors that the People's National Movement selected. And one of the things that was mentioned by Senator Sagram Singh is you had the opportunity to see one of the councillors, Sheldon Fish Garcia, who is going up for Arima Central, and who was able to say to you tonight, listen, I started off in the PNM and I went across to Yellow, to the UNC. And he's able to say to you, he had enough. He understands clearly what the UNC stands for. And he's saying to you that the right choice and the right party is the People's National Movement. And that is why he's back. And we are not here in a PNM platform to say that everything is perfect. We understand that there are still things that need to be done, and that's why we dealt with uh, local government reform. Now, you know, some people said to me that I should not go down this road to say what I'm going to say now, but I have to say it, because some of you might have seen a video that Annie Roberts did recently, where he's talking about the fact that Arima, nothing is happening in Arima, and he's accusing me of not being able to spell. But you know, Alan Roberts has this bravado up here. He appears with this bravado style. And he believes that everybody is afraid of him. So whenever he starts to talk and rant and rave, he thinks that you're going to be afraid to respond to him. But I want to tell Alan Roberts tonight Stay off my Facebook page. Right? You know, he accused me of not being able to spell, but I want to tell him that I prefer to make a mistake in spelling rather than to be accused of being in some motel room with Martin. Be 
being accused of smoking marijuana and trying out rolling of marijuana. I prefer to make mistakes in spelling than to be accused of such activity. Because he wants to use all his time, whether it's attacking the political leader, attacking some of my ministerial colleagues, stay off my page and do what you have to do, rather than ranting and raving and carrying on crazy. So all of those who say to leave him, there are times you cannot leave him because he feels that he's the only person who could get on and carry on. I'm not going to carry on like him. I'm not going to rant and rave like him because the People's National Movement has a particular standard, but at the same time, we cannot tolerate foolishness. And I, I saw a Balize a while ago because I want the People's National Movement members to understand. This Balize, this symbol of the Balize, they could chop it, they could burn it, they could do whatever it wants. It always comes back up. Our political leader has been absolutely clear and resolute in his desire to ensure that local government reform takes place. And it hasn't been an easy road. And if you followed when he became the leader of the opposition, he went through the length and breadth of Trinidad and Tobago, and he had the necessary consultations. And he ensured that he got the views of the people of Trinidad and Tobago before he brought that local government reform to parliament. So it wasn't a VAPS. And some people find it take too long. But the point is that the importance of this process and the importance of the decision required the kind of consultation that took place. And I think it's our responsibility to celebrate tonight that we are finally at this stage and to give our political leader a lusty round of applause. I want to share with you that the cabinet of Trinidad and Tobago took a decision to construct the administrative complex for Arima. Yes. And the consultations have been taking place between Udicott, the mayor's office and councillors, myself and all the relevant persons, and that facility will be built at Robinson Circular. If you, if you pass at the town hall, you will see that there is galvanized to the front, and I think in the next month or two, you will see the unveiling of the restoration work of the Arima Town Hall. Let's give the mayor and councillors. I was not here when the, oh, the completion um, and the official restoration works was done to the Holy Cross College, but I want to give credit to the Honorable Nyan Gatsby Dolly and the Honorable Lisa Morris. And if you go now, you would see the kind of facility that exists at the Holy Cross College, complete and under the leadership of the Minister of Education. Just last week, I had the opportunity to do a tour of the Arima Hospital. And you know, they love to take credit for the Arima Hospital. That is not something that was in the making yesterday. That was in the making for some time. I was part, I sat with Jerry Nares and others, and I'm sure Camille would remember that, and the other people, when all the consultations, yes, the, the government changed, but that was always the decision of the People's National Movement to give Arima that hospital. And I'm sure most of you have visited there. There's the health facility, and there's the hospital, and there's going to be some upgrade as well for the, for the health center. 
Um, and one of the things that you will see that is being put in place together with assistance from the Minister of Housing is improved connectivity and Wi-Fi access for the people who attend at the Arima Health Facility and the hospital. And I'm sure those of you who have visited will see that you're going there and you can get Wi-Fi at the hospital. And that is good to see the People's National Movement. So as we look forward to Arima Connect, where you will have improved uh, Wi-Fi facility, um, I'm sure that that is something that you will cherish. I also want to say that, and, I, I, and the mayor may not have um, developed it, but it's there, that there will be improved works as well at the Arima Market. Um, we also visited the mayor myself again and the sports facility, sports company, sorry, to do some improved works at the Arima Velodrome. So I want to tell Anne Roberts, mind your business. <laughs> It is important for us in Arima, especially now that Mr. Garcia has come back home. The People's National Movement wants the seven districts in Arima. Every single one. So, and as I come to a close, I want again, I don't want you all to forget. I want to make sure that you, it is clear to you, Arima Central, Sheldon Garcia. I saw, I saw Jovan had them, Jovan Roberts had them coming in front. Come on. Potompuna. Kim Garcia. Arima Northeast. Jocelyn Warren, Malaba South. Leonard Ram Sharan, Malaba North. Jenny Scott. Calvary, come on, let's come out the front again. Dave Mirage. So, Laurel, I'll now hand over to you. And let me close by saying, great is the PNM. Great is the PNM. And we shall prevail.